I would like to start this presentation with a question, why fishes are important? So here are some of the answers. First, fishes play an important role in fighting hunger and malnutrition because fishes are sources of proteins, fats, and other nutrients. Second, fishes are excellent recyclers of the nutrients of algae and other bottom-level species need to survive that, in turn, support the remainder of the aquatic ecosystem. And lastly, fishes contribute to various ecosystem services and fishery supply chain. Now, why did I say this? It's because my presentation is focused on fishes, which is titled Understanding the timeline of changes in native and introduced fish species in the seven lakes of San Pablo City, Laguna, which has the following contents from the introduction up to the summary, conclusions, and recommendations. So for the introduction, San Pablo City, Laguna is famous for its seven crater lakes, namely Bunot, Calibato, Palakpakin, Sampaloc, Mohecap, Pandin and Yambo Lake, which are now mainly used for fisheries and tourism. Lakes Sampalo, Palakpakin, Bunot, and Kalibato have several aquaculture setups, while Lakes Yambo, Mohecap, and Pandin offer ecotourism activities for visitors. And maintaining the seven lakes of San Pablo City Laguna's healthy ecosystems and rich biodiversity will increase the ecosystem productivity, provide more food resources, and offer environments for recreation and tourism. That's why studies concerning the fish biodiversity is necessary to serve as a basis for the refinement of local fisheries management as well as environmental policies. So to be able to understand the timeline of changes of the native and introduced fish species in the seven lakes, we have conducted participatory rural appraisal or PRA, fish sampling, and comparison of PRA data with available literatures and fish sampling results. The identification and invitation of PRA participants were done with the help of Tourism Office of San Pablo City and Fisheries and Aquatic Resources Management Council or FARMC. So participants during the PRA include representatives from the local fishermen, Department of Tourism, senior citizens, Samahan ng Bankero, FARMC, and Bantaylawa. So the participants identified the fishery resources available in the seven lakes from the early years, that was uh, approximately 1940 up to 2019, because uh, that's the year when we have conducted the PRA. So this was done by handing meta cards to each participant, and then they were given ample time, about 10 to 15 minutes, to write down their answers for each decadal period. Then the meta cards were pasted on the manila paper hanging on the wall after all the participants have posted their filled up meta cards one representative from each group read through the answers one by one and the facilitator lead a focus group discussion for clarifications about the answers then the procedure was repeated for the subsequent time periods, 1961 to 1980, 1981 to 2000, and then 2001 to 2019. In order to update the available information regarding fish biodiversity, use of gill nets, which is the most common type of fishing technique being employed by the locals, was used to determine the fishery resources in the seven lakes. So these nets with different mesh sizes were set up in each lake at 5 in the afternoon and were retrieved at 7 in the morning. Fish samples were identified using several fish identification materials. And to provide an overview, of the current environmental conditions in the seven lakes, I will also present some of the most important water quality parameters that we have gathered. For this presentation, I will show the dissolved oxygen or DO, pH, and second disc transparency 
during the period of sampling. And uh, using the primary data gathered from fish survey, species, richness, diversity, evenness, and dominance were calculated using the past software. So for the results, based on the local ecological knowledge of San Pablo City residents, introduced fish species are already present from the year 1940 to 19. 81, while some of the native species include the goby or the dosopobius, bakuli or the guris margaritisea, and the ayungin or the leopotera pontlombeus. But it can be noted that in the year 1981 to 2019, these native species became absent in some lakes. Aside from the loss of some native species in some lakes, the focus group discussion revealed that Abundance of fish catch during this period diminished. The PRA results also show that fish composition in the seven lakes were very dynamic from the year 1940 to 2019, which can be attributed to species introduction. A total of 620 individuals were collected from the seven lakes from July to August 2019 sampling. So the sampling was done during the onset of wet season where in the rainfall volume started to increase. Highest number of uh, collected fish samples was recorded in Bunut Lake, followed by Sampaloc Lake, Mohecap Lake, Pandim Lake, Palakpakin, Yambo Lake, and Kalibato Lake. Total number of fish collected was largely represented by Vieja SP or the Red Devil, or also known as Flower Horn from Bonot Lake and Sampaloc Lake. And also, Oriochromis nilaticus is present in Lake Sampaloc, Bonot, Yambo, Kalibato, and Palakpak. So the two species are uh, the most abundant, the Vieja and the Oriochromis nilaticus. Vieja SP is an aquarium fish that was first reported in Lakes Bunot, Kalibato, Mohicap, and Palakpakin in 2017, but there was no record of its mechanism of introduction. On the other hand, Oriochromis niloticus is commonly cultured fish for aquaculture purposes, and then the PRA revealed that they are being stocked both in the fish cages and in the wild or open waters by the fish farmers. At present, Oriochromis nilotico supports the local fisheries production in San Pablo City. In this slide showing the photographs of fish samples collected from the seven lakes, out of 15, only four are native, including Chanus Chanus or the Bangus, we have the Glossogobius aureus or the Bia, Guris margaritase or the Bakuli, and the Leopotera plumbeus or the Ayungin. So the Leopotera plumbeus or the Ayungin is known as endemic in Laguna de Bay. It was translocated in the late 1950s and has successfully established specifically in Sampalo. This present study revealed that their populations have been proliferated in other lakes, which are Sampalo, Bunot, Mohecap, Yambo, and Pandin. Now for the diversity indices, diversity indices for each lake is summarized in this table. Species richness range from one to eight species among the seven lakes. Lake Yambo has the most number of fish species recorded, followed by Bunut Lake, Palakpakin, and then um, Kalibato has actually um, one species. The Shannon Weiner Diversity Index has also the same trend as with the species richness. Yambo Lake has the uh, highest diversity index and lowest in Kalibato Lake. So this can be attributed to the number of fish taxa present and the proportion of individuals for each species. So overall, the Shannon Weiner Index was fairly low, ranging from 0 to one point. 762 because um, 
diversity index typically fall between 1.5 and 3.5 for real communities. Even as values were relatively high to very high, okay, uh, with lowest and highest values observed in Pandin Lake and Kalibato Lake, respectively. This is species dominance values were inversely proportional to diversity index. There is high value in Kalibato because there was only one species collected from that lake. Now, the way how the non-native species were introduced in the seven lakes is still unknown, but their introduction in the Philippines was recorded. One example is the Oreochromis niloticus, a native cyclid from Africa, was introduced in 1972 in the Philippines. It is currently the most important cultured fish species of the lakes and largely supports the local fisheries industry of the city. For the water quality, specifically in dissolved oxygen or DO, most of the specific sites in each lake are in the desirable level, which is 5 ppm at least for the surface waters. Some sites in Lake Palakpaking, which are inside fish cage and pelagic region, have values under 5 ppm. Most of the DO values below 5 meters depth of the water were below 5 ppm, which can be attributed to many processes occurring, such as respiration of heterotrophs, decomposition, as well as the accumulation of many nutrients. In terms of SDP or second disk transparency, Pandin and Yambu are oligotrophic, only Mohikap is mesotrophic, while Bunot, Kalibato, Palakpakin, and Sampaloc are eutrophic. Lakes Bunot, Kalibato, and Palakpakin are the ones with lowest values. This can be attributed to highest number of fish cages present in the lakes, therefore higher inputs of wastes from excess feeds and fecal materials of the fish being cultured. The waters of the lakes are basic. Mean pH levels recorded in seven lakes are range from 7.80 to 8.80. The pH readings were still in ideal range for the growth of most fishes and considerably uh, comparable to pH levels recorded by the Laguna Lake Development Authority or LLDA. So for the summary conclusions and recommendations, PRA results show that fish composition in the seven lakes were very dynamic from 1940 to 2019, which can be attributed to species introduction. Most of the fish species currently present in the seven lakes are non-native. Third, there are no records on how these species were introduced in the lakes. And then increase in non-native fish species in the lakes poses a threat to native species. That's why uh, the future direction of our research is to investigate on how this um, introduced fish species affect the uh, uh, community and the ecosystem of the lakes. And lastly, there should be policy on introducing new fish species to sustain the diversity in the lakes, ensure food security and environmental sustainability. These are my references. And we would like to acknowledge the following Department of Science and Technology or DOST, National Research Council of the Philippines, NRCP, Tourism Office of the San Pablo City, Fisheries, Fisheries and Aquatic Resources Management Council or FARMC, and the participants of our PRA or Participatory Rural Appraisal. Thank you very much from the Seven Lambs team.